Hello everybody, it's Brian for GadgetUnit.com, and in this video I'll be bringing you a quick review of the Alcatel One Touch Fierce XL. This is the Android 5.1 model, not the Windows Phone 10 version. I picked this up at my local Walmart for $112. Their website currently has it listed for $119. And like I said, this will be a brief video where I briefly talk about the different points that I would typically talk about in a phone review, such as the display, the software, battery performance, and so on. I'm also doing this in sort of the classic first person mode. I think that this style of video best represents what the user might experience themselves as opposed to using close, slow moving shots of the device itself. For the specs, you'll find them in the written review that's linked down below in this video's description. So first, let's talk about the design and the hardware. It's pretty standard as far as a low cost Android phone goes, but that's not to say that that's a bad thing. This is what the back shell looks like. This is the champagne color, so it's sort of a light gold kind of on the silver end, depending on the lighting conditions that you are in. On the back, we do have a rear-facing speaker, LED flash, as well as our 8 megapixel rear-facing camera. We also have some Alcatel One Touch branding towards the bottom. Nothing on the left side, where on the top, we do have a microphone pinhole, as well as a 3.5 millimeter headset jack. I prefer to have that and the micro USB port both on the same side of the, of the device, but this is just a minor issue given the price. There's also another microphone pinhole located at the bottom. Here we have a little notch that you can use for removing the back cover. And by the way, on the right side, we do have a volume rocker as well as a power button. I kind of wish that the power button was below the volume rocker because it's something you would be accessing more with one hand, with your thumb rather, than the volume rocker. But again, that's a minor issue. So there's a small notch in the bottom right corner that allows you to remove the back cover, which exposes a non-removable battery. The micro SD card slot, which supports cards up to 128 gigs, so pretty high capacity device overall, as well as your micro SIM card slot. So let's go ahead and pop the back cover back on and move along to the front of the device. All right, so here we are on the front. We have a five and a half inch 720 by 1280 display. It's not the highest resolution, but it's also not the lowest I've seen in a budget device, especially for having a five and a half inch screen. At the top, we do have our two megapixel front facing camera, the speaker, some sensors, and at the bottom, we have three capacitive touch navigation buttons. One that goes to your home screen, one that goes back, and one that goes to your app switcher. There are no options in the settings that I've been able to find that lets you adjust how long you want these lights to stay on. I kind of want them to stay on for a lot longer than they do now. I think they turn off after three seconds. I would rather have maybe five or six. Again, as far as the design goes, it is a bit standard, but it doesn't feel too heavy. It's not too thick either. I think that for the money, this is actually a pretty decent looking device. It feels great in the hand. It is a plastic device, but otherwise it actually feels kind of nice. Now let's move on to the speaker quality. It's okay. It can certainly get loud, especially for notification sounds and ringtones. Music playback is okay. It's not terrible. It's certainly something that you can listen to. I have heard much worse speakers in smartphones. It is rear facing, which is not the most ideal position, but it's not that bad. When you do have it on a table like so, the audio does get amplified because it's being pushed outwards. So that is kind of one advantage to having a rear facing speaker, but this actually does the job just fine. HD voice calls sound pretty good as well as they do on the front facing um, headset here. And this moves on to the display. It does have sort of a plasticky feel to it, which to me doesn't bother me whatsoever. Some people might not like that. So when you tap it, you can kind of tell that it's a bit kind of a, sort of a cheaper feel to it, but it doesn't affect usage and I have had no issues with the multi-touch display. Colors actually don't look that bad at all. So if we go and open up a basic app such as settings, which doesn't really have too much color, it's not too bad. In terms of brightness, it can get quite bright. It works just fine outdoors. I wish that the lowest brightness option would be a bit lower though. So if you're using this in bed or in a dark area, it might be a little bit annoying because the screen brightness just doesn't get quite as low as you would like. Viewing angles aren't the device's strong suit. It's not terrible, but once you do go off axis a bit, the colors do get sort of a warmer tone to them. Otherwise, for the money of this device, it's really nothing to complain about that much. 
The Fierce XL does come with Android 5.1. It's not the latest version of Android, which is 6, but this version does everything just fine. As you can tell, I am using a custom launcher. This is Apex Launcher. I do have all the animations disabled as well because it makes things feel so much faster. Aside from some of the stuff that Alcatel added to the device, mainly different device icons, everything else about it is pretty much stock Android 5.1. Again, I do have a custom launcher installed because I do like this icon pack and it does allow me to simplify my setup quite a bit. So if you've ever used stock Android before, this is pretty much what you'll experience on the Fierce XL. Performance has actually been pretty good. I've had no complaints about the performance of this device. I don't really play any hardcore games. Here are the games that I have installed. Lately, I've been playing a little bit of Futurama and, of course, Crossy Road, and both of those run just fine on the phone. This does have 2 gigs of RAM, so you do get a little bit extra memory boost for when you're running multiple applications in the background at once. A lot of budget phones usually have 1 gig of RAM. In terms of launching apps, I've had no problems in terms of app launch times. So we'll go over to settings. Doesn't take too long. We'll go over to the Play Store app. Doesn't take too long either. Let's see, we'll go ahead and open up Tweetcaster. Doesn't take too long. We'll go ahead and open up the stock Twitter app. And we're done. Let's see what else we can open. Spotify seems to take quite a while to open no matter what device you're running on. Although I will say that this opened up faster than it does on my iPhone. Let's open up the camera app. So a few seconds and we are at the camera, which is actually pretty simple to use by the way. Let's go ahead and open up the TV Guide app. Not much time at all. So despite how much I like to use my smartphones, I'm not really that much of a heavy user. I usually open up simple apps to where pretty much any CPU and RAM configuration is fine. But given the price of this device, I've been very happy with performance overall. So you see that we've opened up several apps here and we can switch to any of them without them having to reopen. So the Google Play app, Went right back to where we were. Same with the TV Guide app. If we go back to the Twitter app, same deal there. If we go over to Spotify, that's still open as well. Then we, we can clear all apps by tapping on that and it tells up how much memory we freed up. I haven't really found this to be too accurate. Sometimes when I close a single app, it'll only say that one meg of RAM has been freed up. So performance, quite good on this device if you do basic tasks like myself. Battery life performance isn't terrible either. If I go down to the battery log here, it's only been unplugged for an hour and a half. I lost 9%. The screen has been on for not too long and we have lost 9%. Typically on a day, it, I can go from unplugging it at 7 in the morning to plugging it back in at around 10.30 at night and still have between 20 and 30% left. And that's with 100% LTE usage, no Wi-Fi at all, and roughly an hour and a half of LTE video streaming per day, and a number of other mixed usage options. So battery-wise, the Fierce XL manages my usage scenarios just fine. Next up, call and cellular network performance. I've been using this on T-Mobile in the US and it works completely fine with their network. It also supports band 12 LTE, voice over LTE, Wi-Fi calling and HD voice calls. So everything you would want in a T-Mobile US device. I've noticed that it hangs on to low LTE signals very well, much better than my iPhone 6 Plus. So call quality and network performance is just fine. And lastly, that brings us to camera quality. I haven't used the camera very much, to be honest. Even with my other devices that I use more than this, I don't use the camera that much. I just don't take a lot of photos. I do have a few fo uh, food photos, which I'll show full screen, untouched, on your screen now. Here we have one of a shredded chicken burrito from Taco Bell. Here we have one of the Taco Bell itself. You can notice, you notice that the quesalupa window display here has the cheese stretching across the windows. Here we have a burger that I made the other day. This is with flash on, and this one is with flash off. It's somewhat detailed in areas with lower light. I think that for the money, the camera is perfectly adequate for what most people are going to be doing. Of course, during extremely low light scenarios, you can't expect it to do too well. But otherwise, for basic shots of outdoor things and sort of evening shots of different items, the camera on the Fierce XL can do 
decently well and should be more than adequate for what a lot of people might be doing. I have not used the front-facing camera, so I cannot speak to that. Also, I did not use the video recording feature, so I can't speak to what the 1080p 30 video quality is like. But again, given the price of this device overall, I think that this is a fantastic phone for the money. You're just getting so much phone for a little bit of money, $119. This, I think, rivals devices like the Huawei Honor 5X. Granted, that has a higher resolution screen and a rear fingerprint reader, but that's $200 versus the 120 for this. So you're saving 80 bucks and you're still getting a very capable device. Blue has a phone in the $150 range as well. And I honestly think that the Fierce XL for 120 bucks is a very, very good smartphone for the money. If I wasn't primarily an iPhone user, I would have no problems getting the Fierce XL and using that as my primary device for the long run. For the past 14 days, actually, this has been my primary device. My iPhone has been sitting in a drawer. I've been very much using this device like I normally would my iPhone, and I've really enjoyed using it. So if you're considering the Fierce XL, I would not hesitate to pick this up. It's a great device at a great price, and I don't think that many people will be disappointed by it. So that's it with the video. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback about this or anything else, feel free to leave everything down below in the comments area. But that's it with the video. So thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.